God's been working with me on some stuff. Let me just say this to you. Well, let me read. Go to, go to, go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. If I'm forgetting to say something, y'all forgive me. I just got to get into this word right now. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Look what the word, look what the Lord says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. And not of evil, watch this, to give you an expected end. Touch your neighbor, tell him God already wrote the ending. Look them in the eye and tell him in the end you win. T.D. Jakes was educating, watch this, T.D. Jakes was educating about uh, how movies are made, and I didn't know this. I thought that they start movies with the beginning, you know, Bishop, and work their way on through the frames and then, then figure out how the ending going to be. But Bishop says, no, the way movies are written is that you write the ending, you write the movie the way you want it to end, and then you back up, and then you fill in all the blanks that leads to that end. That's the way God wrote your life. And let me tell you something. God has never created a failure. There's nothing in God's plan that says you fail. Your ending always has you winning. Now God brings you, he writes the ending, he brings you, he winds back and he starts you off in life and then you begin to live towards that expected end. But there's some things that you got to get in alignment. The difference between winning in life versus losing in life, watch this, is your ability to get a picture in your mind of what God sees. Now I want to ask you a question tonight. Do you have an image in your mind of what God has said, what God has predestined for you? Or is your mind filled with the limitations of society, the limitations of an ignorant upbringing, the limitations of religious training? What's in your mind? What picture's in your head? What story are you telling yourself? When you look at your money, what, what, what image do you have? Do you see yourself as always being broke? I had, a, I had a young couple. I was trying to get them into home ownership. And the woman, that's why it's bad to be a monkey, man. You need to lead your house at some point as a man. The woman, all she could keep talking about was Section 8 and her voucher. She didn't want to risk her voucher. I said, honey, I'm not talking about no voucher. I'm talking about home ownership, but I couldn't get that voucher out of mine. And you know what? I left them alone. Because you know what? You cannot bring a person further than they can see. Some of y'all right now are tied up with people. You see more for them than they see for themselves. And you're wasting all of your energy and resources on somebody who's satisfied where they are. Touch that neighbor next to you. Ask him, now, what do you see in your spirit? So the thing I want to work on tonight is the power of your imagination. I don't know if y'all caught that in the spirit, though, see? You caught that in the spirit. You should have tore all that chair. You should have tore all the cover off that chair. Come on, somebody say, the power of my imagination. Definition of imagination is it's the act or power, you don't have to repeat it, the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. Now, what God does is, watch this, God writes the ending, that expected end, he winds back and he starts you and I in life and we begin to live out the various scenes of life and what happens is now listen to this carefully God communicates the revelation of your expected end to your spirit and your spirit makes impressions or images on your soul now what happens is watch this when you are a dreamer when you are a visionary when you have this image of that expected end and you begin to share that with people who have no vision. They talk you out of what God has shown you. 
touch that neighbor next to them. Don't let nobody talk you out of this now. I remember when your pastor got this, came here to look at this, this place here. And, uh, man, this was the biggest project. I, I said, my God, you know. And he had all the faith in the world for it. And he said, what do you think, Robert Jr.? I said, I believe God. Because, you know, if you can't see what a man sees, don't, don't, don't talk him down. Just support. But you, you got a whole lot of, well, you know, I'm going to tell you now, it's the wrong economy over here in Alabama to be trying to do something like You think you can do all, you know how much square footage that is. You know how much it's going to cost to paint that. You know what the light bill going to be. When you know what God has shown you. Don't let nobody, I believe with all of my heart, that's the reason God told Abraham, get away from your people and all of them. Because your friends, your family, are the main faith killers when it comes down to the vision that God is putting in your spirit and they will kill your imagination. I remember so vividly. Let me read this first. The Bible says in Genesis 30, 75, speaking of Joseph, and Joseph dreamed a dream. And Joseph dreamed a dream. Now, touch that neighbor again. We're going to touch tonight. Just touch that neighbor. Ask him, what kind of dreams are you having? I'm not talking about all the monsters and stuff you see. That's, that's from all them crazy movies you go see, you know. Eating all them red beans and everything laying down at night. <laughs> Uh, the dreams I'm talking about, your eyes wide open. I feel something up in here. What are you dreaming? You know, let me tell you something. Let me help you young women out because y'all don't know nothing about how to choose no man. You don't ever choose a man that can't see more than where you at now. Why would you submit your life and come under the authority of somebody who can't see no more than what you got now? Leave that alone. That didn't go over very well. <laughs> you need a mental picture, watch this, of a preferred future. Yeah. See, the thing that wakes me up in the morning, watch this, the thing that wakes me up in the morning is that I know my tomorrow is greater than my today. Yeah. Watch this. I'm living, Larry, I'm living. I'm living in my tomorrow. Yeah. Now, something on my life now, Y'all listen to me. Something on my life now that I ain't never had before. My dad told me what happened. Everything that I've ever imagined or dreamed is either coming to pass, come to pass, and everything is doubling. Everything doubling. Everything pertaining to me right now is doubling. I'm, I'm quiet about it. But everything I've ever seen, and see, one thing I appreciate about that old man y'all just saw in that thing there, as a father, his greatest deposit in my life and my brother's was that he taught us how to imagine, how to dream, how to see tomorrow. I remember we, we grew up in a shotgun house. Y'all have shotgun houses, yeah? Yeah, this, this ain't nothing but New Orleans uh, East anyway. That's all this is. That's all it is. Ain't nothing but New Orleans East, hallelujah. Watch this. We grew up in a shotgun house. And, you know, a little wood frame house. You see through the front door all the way through the back. All of us up in there, you know, ain't no, no separate bedroom. You, you got to walk through everybody's bedroom to get to the kitchen. No privacy. Ain't no such thing as privacy. You can just take all the doors off. Ain't no privacy. And uh, we grew up in there, and Dad would take us, and he would drive us in an area in New Orleans called the Lakefront. And these, this is a place where you have these houses that's 10, 15, probably some as much as 20,000 square feet sitting on the lake, Lake Pontchartrain. And Dad would say to my brother and I, he said, boys, one of these days we're going to live in a house like this. And, man, we would dream. And I would be like, wow, Dad, I didn't even know they had houses like this. They got them, son. And one of these days we're going to live in one. Well, a few years later, we moved on up to an area called Metairie, Louisiana, and we finally got us a little brick house. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't like them houses on Lakefront, but I mean, I felt like George and Weezy then. We moved on up, you know. The east side finally got a piece of the pie, you know. 
And I'm about to get satisfied by the time I'm about to get satisfied. He says, come on, boy. A few years later, he says, take a ride with me. We drive, we go into an area, and we go through these gates, and we go back to the house. We're sitting on the lake. I said, I wonder who daddy visiting today. <laughs> Real estate lady pull up. We go inside the house, and got a big old uh, kidney-shaped pool in the backyard. The levee there, you go up on the levee. You can look, go over right there, look at Lake Pontchartrain. Went around this area. They got big old house there. You got an elevator to go upstairs. And Dad said, boys, I think we're going to buy this. I said, Dad, I think this is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. I went back to school the next day. Said, My daddy about to buy a house with an elevator in it. <laughs> Watch this. What was he doing from the very beginning? He was stretching our capacity to see. What I want to do tonight, in a few minutes I'm here, I want to stretch your capacity to see. Some of you all have been smothered by small people with small minds and no faith for the future. But I want you to prophesy to that person next to you. Just tell them it's not going to always be the way it is. Is getting ready to get real good. Ooh, somebody caught that in the spirit. It's getting ready to get real good. I mean, it's getting ready to get real good, man. Ain't no need you going into depression now because everything you've been waiting on, everything you've been waiting on. You cut one of these off now. I'm gonna stick with this here. Hallelujah. Everything you've been waiting on. Everything you've been waiting on. Uh, cut that monitor off. I think if you cut that monitor off, this thing won't be as hot. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So everybody say, my imagination, my imagination is being stretched tonight. Is 